Hello everyone, it's Kirsten from Kirsten Bread Vsale. I hope everyone is doing fantastic. Um, this is part two of my uh, vintage purse um, collection, I guess you could say. Um, this one is slightly different because it's uh, later, later in time periods, um, and not as uh, glitzy, not as like, you know, shiny and that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna call this like my fall edition. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. So everyone said they really enjoyed the other video. So we'll see how this one goes a little different though. Okay. Um, and there comes my little dog. Okay. So I don't know if I'm going to do, okay. I'll try to do it in sort of uh, a time period. Okay. So this looks just like an ordinary bag. Oh, hold on. Time out. I have a disclaimer. Okay. I do not endorse the killing of animals to use in goods. These are all older pieces that this is what they used. Um, I am a collector and so I do collect. Um, I try not to buy new leather, but um, to each his own. You know, I'm not here to start political anything. So I just wanted to put that out there because I do know some of my followers are uh, animal activists and vegans and I think that's amazing. Um, I don't want to offend anyone. So if, if you will be offended by seeing, you know, snakeskin or ostrich. This would not be the video for you. Okay, that being said, thank you. Um, back to this. Uh, just looks like a whatever. What this is, this is vintage Gucci. This is from 1960s. This is a travel wallet slash purse. Um, this was actually my grandfather's, not my grandmother's, my grandfather's. Um, I don't know what everything... Like it has, I don't know, oh, for cigars, I guess your cigars, sunglasses, credit cards, passports, train tickets, I don't know. Um, then there was this handle that you'd be able to carry it. I don't know if this fit on luggage. I don't know a lot about, <laughs> about it, unfortunately. Um, it's in not great condition. It's okay, but because it was my grandfather's, I thought it was really cool. Um, interesting enough, um, a lot of luxury goods brands, um, you want to look for certain types of zippers. And sometimes they use them, sometimes they didn't. But YKK zippers are um, a telltale sign that it's a, a, a very nice quality um, bag, leather bag. Uh, might not be designer, but, you know, uh, a lot of designers do use YKK. Gucci is one of them. I don't know if they always use it. Different time periods they do. Uh, Louis Vuitton uses it. Cartier uses it. Anyway, just a little bit of tidbits, figured I'd let you know. So this is a, I want to say this is a unisex travel satchel, vintage Gucci. Very cool. Okay, so that's that one. Woo -hoo. Okay, what else are we going to do? So um, we have that. What am I going to do? I'll do this one. Okay, so this is a beautiful purse. There is some wear to it, okay? This is snakeskin. It has the thing that you put your hand in to hold it. I have a big chunky ring on, so my hand won't fit through it. And it does open. Let's get it open. Okay. Satin on the interior, zipper, and a slot. Okay. So this purse. This is one of the, not original Judith Lieber, but this is a vintage Judith Lieber purse. Okay, Judith Lieber. She does a lot of, like, the real fancy glitzy, you know, that are, like, animals or birds or, like, a... A candy cane or a, you know Hershey kiss or whatever it is um, that's not how she started okay so her very first bags um, which were in the 60s she started in 1963 she's a Holocaust survivor anyway she's very cool um, her first bags only came in one color and they were calfskin and they were green that was it green calfskin purse that was her first purse then when she moved on a little bit later not that much later I don't know how many years, uh, a handful of years. I'm not sure. I don't want to give the incorrect date, so I don't know. She started using a lot of snakeskin, multiple colors, and that kind of thing. Um, that's what that is. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any, you know, 70s or 80s or 90s Judith Lieber because when my grandmother passed away, my mom got them, which, you know, come on, totally, of course, you know, it would go to my mom, right? But my mom was nice enough. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Bob. This is a Judith Lieber comb. Now, all I don't know what year she started doing this, but when you bought one of her luxury purses, 
because they're expensive. My grandmother used to buy them at Saks Fifth Avenue, and sometimes you could even get them custom done, which was quite amazing. They came with a really beautiful little gold-plated comb, hair comb. So not that this would fit through anyone's hair except for maybe a baby, but anyway, I thought that was nice. Thanks, Mom. Love it. Okay. <laughs> Says Judith Lieber. Um, really interesting lady if you wanted to look her up. You know, I don't know. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Okay. This is from 1960s. Okay, this is a California brand. Okay, this is Alligator. Sorry. Okay. Um, this is called Sydney, California. This is in pretty immaculate condition. Like, a little dusty, a little stiff on the inside. Like, this is stiff. But um, other than that, like, really great. Don't have little feet, which is kind of weird. But anyway, um, kind of unusual. You don't see a whole lot of luxury um, leather goods coming out of the U.S. Not that many. I'm sure there's a few. There's a few. But this one um, was huge in the 60s and 70s. Um, I don't know if they still exist. I don't, I've not done research um, as far as modern stuff. But they were huge in Hollywood. Um, a lot of the actresses would use their purses um, and wallets. I thought that was really cool. Um, also, they had different ranges. So like, if you want to call it a common person, non-Hollywood person would be able to have a similar look at a, still this company, but they had a less expensive line, I guess you could say. So anyway, really cool. Now, the purses I'm sh I've shown you so far, I do not use. These are either stashed away in a dust bag or on display in my closet. So, okay. So that's that one. Um, let me see. Speaking of, we're still in the 60s. We're still doing 60s? Yeah, I think we're doing 60s. Okay. So here's another. This is late 50s, early 60s. This is just a nice, um, there's, I don't know, there's a name in it. It's no one of note that I'm aware of. See, dust, horrible. This is satin, and it has all the beautiful little rhinestones up there. And they are all still there, which is great. Um, it has a little bit of leather, which is right there. Um, let's see, no, black satin. It does have a signature. This did at one point have a little mirror. A lot of times they would come with mirrors. Um, I don't know if, I don't know, and it would fit back there. Is that some schmutz? Yep, some schmutz. So this is just like a typical style evening bag. You know, satin, really simple, elegant. Um, you can find these at thrift stores quite often. Okay. Now we're gonna go to, hmm, I don't know, what do we wanna do? How about we go to, hmm. Okay, well, this is from the 50s. This is leather and suede. This is a really big envelope purse. I wanna say, you know, research, they said 60s, 50s, 60s, you know, I would say not early, I'd say, you know, late 50s. Um, it could use a suede brush. Um, I have cleaned this. I have used this purse in the past um, it, because it's nice size. Like it really, this is what I did last time. You can fit, look, this, a little card wallet with your ID, card, cash, you know, small set of keys. You don't want to make it too puffy, but, and the inside of it is red. It's like really weird velvet. It's like that not real velvet. I'm not sure what this is called. It's like a velveteen. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the sound is kind of ease. But anyway. Um, but it's a nice pop of red. It does hold quite a bit. Really cool. I like the little tabs here. Well, on camera, you can really see that I need to pay a little attention to this. The suede. Maybe if you're interested, I can show you how to restore suede. <laughs> I'm still learning, but you know, I need to do things. There we go. Okay, speaking about my grandmother. Okay, um, my grandparents were, you know, all about, they traveled the world. My grandmother was very much into fashion. She's the one who really got me into it and finer things in life, but also average things, normal things that you could just find on the corner, basically. Um, this at some point, they became everything they wanted. wanted they wanted it to be made in the U.S. Um, I do know that 
a lot of Americans at certain times in their life, that was very important because of all the wars and everything that was going on in the political climate of their time. That being said, um, but they wanted, my grandparents still wanted luxury. So, okay, so this is called Gary Leather. This is Gary's Leather. This is also very, very well, pretty well known at one point. I don't know if it still is. Um, USA made. Okay. This has silk taffeta on the inside. Now, this was hers, and she used it, so it is beat up. You have to think of your pen, the checkbook, you know. Um, okay, I'm going to cover the names, but look at the credit card from back in the day. Look at the, the way that they were shaped. Look how long and narrow. Isn't that crazy? Like, really small. Like, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, so when I got this wallet from her, that was in there. And I just kept it because, you know, I got a kick out of it. And here's the change. Right there. This is Genuine Lizard. Okay. So, I don't know. It held up fair. The ID thing cracked. Where is it? You know, some of them, you know, I don't know what happened to it. It is what it is. But doesn't matter it was my grandmom's but it's really lovely if you see how they did the piping they even wrapped the lizard around the metal so the design element is really nice and that has not peeled or pulled up or anything now the back here is leather and I'm assuming that is because that's where change would go it would beat up the silk taffeta so because the inside is silk taffeta anyway just it's cool how things change a lot. We don't carry checkbooks with us anymore. Well, at least no one I know does. I'm sure some people still do. Anyway, this was my grandmother's. Okay, moving on. So that was like the 50s and 60s, right? Well, we're still gonna do a little bit more. Okay, so my grandmother, sorry I keep talking about my grandmother, but it's where I got some of these things and I got a lot of inspiration. She was a big part of my, my life. So anyway. She was the woman who always had beautiful gloves, okay? So this is a pair of her gloves, her winter gloves. I got big chunky rings. Evidently, you couldn't really wear rings. And she had some honkers, so they're very little. These are the kind that you really have to work on. And I have long fingers, but not, they're thin, I guess you could say. But like these were, you know, really beautiful. There's all the crystals, evening. This is just an example. She had a lot, a lot, every color, different years. She had ones, you know, the real long ones. So these are beautiful. So we've got these. And then the typical, just brown leather. These would be like daily wear. Then she had, these are so cool. Okay, ready? Look at these white leather with a chain. These are leather with a little chain. These are tiny. I don't know how she had nails. Like, she had long nails. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, maybe she didn't win these when she wore these, but look. And, like, nowadays, well, where I live, we don't wear gloves. <laughs> no. But growing up, she always did. And we know it was back east. It's cold. You wore winter gloves, you know. But she took care of So when she passed, going through her closet, she had each one. This is the dry cleaner. Each one of her leather gloves were in these. So, be a friend, tell a friend. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? So I keep her gloves with, you know, with the bags that they all came in. And she never would put with the white leather on top of the black or with the brown because of bleeding. You wouldn't want to, anything to happen with tan or white or you know any lighter colored. So that was a little tidbit I learned from her. I guess that would make common sense, but you know, I was a kid. We always do stupid things. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go to like, um, where we're gonna go, late 70s, 80s? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I know this isn't a purse. Um, I think I should this in another video, but this is from the um, early 80s. This is a Gucci compact. I don't wanna blind you, so I'll do this way. You have the magnification one, the regular. It has a little stand, so when you're putting all your lipstick on, look, I forget how it's, so, there you go, something like that, yeah, there you go. It would stand up, so at the table or wherever you are. This is in really lovely condition. So, this is from the early 80s. Okay, speaking about 
80s. <laughs> this is Givenchy. Excuse the trash in there. There is the tag. This is ostrich. Yeah, I know. I know, guys I know, gals and guys I know. But that being said, it is what it is. And poor animal had to suffer. Um, I don't want to throw this in a landfill. You know, I don't believe in that. I believe in reuse. Use it, reuse it, sell it. You know, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it because this ostrich, I mean, it's obviously incredibly well made. Okay, like, yes, we can get into the design elements and everything. Um, it has the long strap, so this can be worn uh, around you, like like a side bag, cross body bag. Thank you, cross body bag, you know, um, but there's that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I know, I don't want to offend anyone. I really don't, so... Now we're going to go to, um, I guess we'll go to, where are we going to go? We're going to go to this. Okay, this is also leather. This I have used, and I, I adore this bag. Okay, this is um, Anne Klein. This is vintage Anne Klein. Look at this. So we've got the little lion, tan leather. Who knows what's in here? Uh, who knows? Business cards from some time at somewhere. And this is just a wristlet, but it, look how big this wristlet is. Like this, that's why I used it. <laughs> but look, so this holds a nice amount. And how cool from back then with the gun metal, that was not something you saw often. At least I never did. Well, I guess maybe in the eighties, I wasn't really looking at bags like this, um, but I don't know. I think it's really beautiful. I love the color of the leather. This is the kind, like Louis Vuitton's. I have not brought any of that stuff out here. Um, I do have that kind of stuff as well, vintage ones, but um, tan and get richer and softer over time. Yeah, so. Okay. Now we're going to move to some Chanel. Um, these are vintage Chanel. They're not in fantastic condition, but that's okay. We'll start with this one. This one was released in the late 80s, early 90s. This is satin, satin Chanel with leather piping around the edges. Now the leather, you can see it was like a coated silver. Oopsie, it has peeled away. Now I have to be honest with you all, okay? For anyone who loves Chanel, don't come for me. I love Chanel too, okay? That being said, I've had quite a bit of Chanel purses and wallets, new and old. They do not hold up. If you plan on using them, they don't last. For a luxury brand, I expect more. I expect better. I mean, I would never, I wouldn't spend what a new one would cost, but I'm just saying that, you know, like I have other companies that are like no name from Italy, or whatever, that have been worn and used and abused and are remarkable, look better with age. Not so much with some of these other brands. I'm just being honest, okay? Sorry. Okay, so this is a tiny, tiny little evening bag. It's all satin. You know, there they've got, there's a code. Well, actually, there's this one that has, not, I'm not sure if this one has the date code. I'm not even remembering. It has the little tiny, I don't even know what would fit in there. Maybe a tiny little lipstick. Nothing fits in here. I'm just letting you know. This is literally like nowadays, like nothing. Like my phone wouldn't fit in here. Um, if you didn't have a phone and you just wanted to, you know, put, hold your phone and put like a little wallet card case in here, makeup maybe. I don't know. Um, this is one that I just have on display. Um, it's satin. It's very difficult to keep it non dusty. I should probably, you know, try to keep it up a little bit better. But I thought it was different. I really like the satin. Okay, now this is what I'm gonna show you that did not last well, okay? This bag is from 1998. This is Chanel, this is pebbled leather. Okay, so, it looks great from the outside. I have used this. It is peeling and sticky and gross on the inside. Like, I can't use this now. Like, it literally, it's sticky. 
Um, and I take care of my purses. I stuff them, I cover them, you know, um, and this is just, it's falling apart. It's just really not good. Um, and I do know from this year, this particular colored batch or whatever they want to call it, um, they had, I don't, they don't call it recalls. They, they do short runs because they stopped making it. Um, I guess they had to redo. See how it's like bubbling here? It's because it's literally falling apart on the inside. You know, so can you imagine if you bought this for who knows what it originally cost? You know, it would be horrible. I would be so mad. Now, I don't know what their policy is as far as sending it in and getting it fixed. And, you know, this was not a new thing. Um, this was secondhand, secondhand, secondhand. So, um, you know, I'm not worried about it. I just keep it stuffed um, and keep it covered. You know, it's kind of a shame. But I'm going to show you an example of something that is a no name that is older than these. This is genuine leather. It has two pouches on the outside, one on the inside. And this is Saks Fifth Avenue when they first opened. I don't recollect, I didn't write down the year. I do apologize. Um, Saks Fifth Avenue in New York, the, the flagship store, they had their own brand, luxury brand. And it was just Saks Fifth Avenue. And I think to this day, they still do. If I'm correct, I'm not sure. But this bag has been used. This was my grandmother's, okay? This was mine. I have used this. I have lent it out. And there's no peeling, no cracking, no anything. And this has not been treated with the... My grandmother obviously treated it really well, but I've had this probably since I was in my 20s. I'm now <clears throat> in my 40s, you know? So, you know, look at this. I have not once done anything. I've conditioned it. I have. I live in a very dry climate. So about, I don't know, should do it more often, but once a year, maybe, maybe. That's exaggerating a little bit, to be honest. I'll go and take some of the leather and do a conditioner because it is so dry here. But I mean, I mean, really? Like, so this, you know, I'm sure, oh, there's still that there, it's funny. I'm sure uh, if this wasn't an inexpensive bag, you know, I did sex with Avenue after all. Let me see if I can zoom in. You see that? Made in Italy. But I mean, seriously, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bag. And I'm sure instead of paying $3,000 or whatever you want to pay for a Chanel, pay a few hundred and it lasts even longer. Isn't that crazy? I don't know. I thought that was pretty crazy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a little bit different. Um, Maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but I figured I'd share. Anyway, thank you so much. This is Kirsten from Kirsten Red Resale. Thanks for letting me indulge and show you some of my cool retro, I don't, yeah, retro from 60s, late 50s, all the way up to the 90s. Have a great one. I'll see you guys later this week. Don't forget, please hit the notification bell. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. I do have live sales every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Talk to you guys later. Bye.